Hello and welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today we are looking at Zorin OS 18 on a budget mini PC. Now I've already done videos for Linux Mint and Ubuntu on the same budget mini PC. And when I say budget, this is what we're looking at. It's got four gigs of RAM. It's only a 62 and a half gigabyte drive. It's got two Intel Celerons. Um, so in theory it can run Zorin OS, uh, but in practice, I think you're going to see throughout this video, it can't. So why am I running Zorin OS on this machine and not Zorin OS Lite? Well, uh, Zorin OS 18 is the last time that they're going to do a Lite edition of Zorin. So whilst you can get Zorin OS Lite now, uh, it's, it's the last release of Zorin OS Lite. Which means if you want to use the XFCE desktop in Zorin OS going forward, you have to install it as a standard desktop package. So why are they doing this? They say that thanks to recent optimizations to the standard desktop, the non-light editions of Zorin OS Core are able to provide a faster and resource-efficient computing experience on older computers. It is now possible to run the non-light editions on computers with as little as 2 gigabytes of RAM and on machines as old as 15 years. While this PC I'm on is only 4 or 5 years and it's one of the cheap budget mini PCs that you get on Amazon um, for around about the £100 mark. So these things are being sold in the thousands, probably every day, and Zorin, uh, what they're saying here, should run on it because it's got 4 gig of RAM, but I think the processor is probably the downside. Now what I'm going to show you today is no reflection on Zorin as an operating system because Zorin is great on proper decent hardware. But I'm going to say now that I think cutting out Zorin OS Lite is a bit of a mistake because I don't think Zorin itself is optimized enough to run on a lot of older PCs and certainly these budget mini PCs. So let's close this down. So installation was awful. Uh, it was slow. It took ages for the screens to appear and the animations. It, it just wasn't a great experience. And I was trying to record a video at the same time, which didn't help at all. So Zorin OS um, installing on this budget mini wasn't a great thing at all. Now, responsiveness of these menus, it looks okay here, but um, quite often flicking between windows takes a bit of time and it seems to stutter and stall when you're switching between applications. Now, if we look at hardware, hardware should be fine. So I'm on a wide at the moment, but if I go to Wi-Fi, you can see um, the Wi-Fi is there and it's, it, it will work. And it shows that I'm now on Wi-Fi. When it comes to Bluetooth, Bluetooth should work as well. Just click on the device here. Connecting. And let's see if we can play a video. Now the default browser is Brave. Now, uh, Ubuntu, when I tried this, was poor. Mint was uh, a lot better. Okay, have a bit of time to catch up. But you can see it's very stuttery indeed. And that's at 480p. So I haven't even tried at the 1080p. And you can see that's not a great experience really at all. Does my printer work? Uh, yes, it's found the printer straight away. Uh, so the applications that come by default include uh, an image viewer and LibreOffice Draw. Under the internet, you've got Brave, and you've got Romina for remote access, and you've got the web apps tool so you can turn things like YouTube into a web app. 
Under Office, we have the LibreOffice Suite and Evolution as a mail client. Sound and Video got uh, Rhythmbox as the audio player, and you've got the um, video player here. I think it's probably the GNOME one. And you've got a sound recording tool. And that's pretty much it. Now, when it comes to installing applications on Zorin, it's the GNOME software manager. And this is going to be well, that's actually really responsive. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting that to take a while. So that's actually really good. So I wonder if that's loading in the background. So let's see what we've got. Because it's Zorin, you'll have the choice of snaps and you'll have the choice of flat packs as well. So if you wanted Chrome, which I doubt you would because it's quite heavy on resource, but it is there. And you definitely wouldn't want Steam because there's no way you'd play, be playing Steam games on this machine. But it is there, and... So if you're on a decent machine, then obviously you can see Zorin is going to be great for a normal PC, but on this machine it's a little bit slow and clunky. Now I've got to say it's not as bad as I was expecting it to be. Um, it does stutter when it goes between applications, but then it's having to manage memory, so it's it's not as bad as I was expecting. It's probably on a par of Ubuntu, um, not quite as slick as Mint. But you can see it's actually performing okay. So is there anything we can do to improve the performance without changing the desktop environment? Well, let's go into the settings. You can see here you can change your backgrounds and you can see they're taking a little while to load. But there isn't many settings to enable you to turn things on and off. So what you really want to be doing is turning off um, animations and things like that. So I wonder if we go into this appearance tab. Under effects, enable animations. Let's turn that off. And that definitely makes things work. Uh, more slick on the menu side of things and that's a definite improvement um, in terms of visuals and stuttering that improves things a little bit um, what I'm going to do now is I am actually going to install the XFCE desktop and see what that gives us in terms of improvement and whether you can actually still use appearance settings and stuff, because I think that's what you're going to lose if you move to Zorin OS 19 when it comes out next year, and they get rid of the light version. So I'm hoping they're going to have a still have Zorin OS sort of like themed XFC desktop, but I, I suspect not. I'm actually quite impressed. Actually, it's actually performing pretty decently now, especially now I've turned off the animations. It's not looking like I can do this via. The software manager, so we're going to do it via the terminal. Now that took a little bit of time to load the terminal. And whilst I was using the installer, that kept hanging and it would do the force quit thing. Which is a bit weird because the terminal doesn't take much memory at all. Let's clear the screen.
So X of C4 is the meta package and that should give you everything. So we're just going to do sudo at store. So you can see it's asked for a display manager. Um, so we need to choose one. Uh, I'm going to choose light DM because it works better with XFCE. Now that's installed, we'll exit that into the XFCE and see what we get. So this is me in the XFCE desktop. Now this is like if you're on Zorin OS 19, which is what they're suggesting. They're suggesting that if you want the XFCE, you have to install it. Now the XFCE desktop wallpaper is the worst wallpaper I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, this is the default wallpaper. Let's change that straight away because that is awful. I think I prefer something brighter like that. Now you really got the stock um, XFCE here, even if you look up at the applications, you've got the old menu. Now I actually had a comment during the week that somebody said they wish they still had these sort of menus where you go in and it's just pick a category and it's got the applications. Uh, so there you go, um, That for that person, uh, install XFCE, stock desktop on any distribution and this is what you get. Uh, personally I would do more to this but at the same time you're kind of losing the best features of Zorin by installing the XFCE desktop but you can see it's definitely a good experience in terms of performance. We're going to do some a little bit of messing around with this and get it to be the way you want it to be. Now we haven't got the whisker menu here, so um, there's something you could do with XFC, which is why I've opened the terminal. This gives you a lot more things for XFC, a lot more plugins and stuff. And it's definitely worth installing. What I don't like with the XFC is the way it does this with the dark sort of thing here. Um, when I log out and log back in, it will probably go back to normal. But there's a lot more manual sorting out the bars and stuff. Unless you install a theme, which is what we'll do shortly. But for now, let's add in the whisker menu. I've accidentally added the wrong thing there. That's what we want. Um, we're going to click that. We're going to click move to there. And then we're going to go up to here. We're going to click remove on that. And we'll find that weather update and we'll remove that as well. And there we go. We get a better menu for XFC. Now, obviously, I don't really like the way this is. So we're going to look at themes. There's lots of different themes you can go for on the icon side. So it's all in grey light. And then you can change the fonts if you want to. And so that's what you can do to improve the performance of Zorin OS on an old budget PC. You can see it's definitely performing a lot better now. So if we go to the web browser, it, it can't make things work brilliantly. Like these ducks probably aren't going to swim any better than they were before. I'm actually getting issues with it trying to play the video back now, which is a bit disconcerting. So a few things happened um, since the last bit. Um, I ended up rebooting because the YouTube wouldn't run. 
and you'll see I'm now in the Zorin desktop and that's because XFCE died and when rebooting I ended up in a weird display manager it was like the GDM display manager but an Ubuntu style one but not the one you'd expect with Ubuntu it's like an older one uh, so I've managed to get into the Zorin desktop and I'm going to summarize the video at this point and summarize the experience so Zorin does work in the same way as Ubuntu worked on this PC it's not a great experience I wouldn't recommend a distribution like this on an older um, budget PC so if it's an older PC or it's a budget mini or something like that I wouldn't recommend I would recommend something lighter and that's what we're going to look at in the next video is a lightweight distribution on this budget mini to see if we can make it work properly now this is no reflection of Zorin overall because Zorin is a good distribution and I thoroughly recommend it on better hardware like my normal PC that I use but I don't recommend it on this PC everything works uh, in terms of hardware etc um, and it looks nice and it's easy to install software so functionally it's great it's just performance wise it's not good on this PC they are getting rid of Zorin OS Lite and I don't know if that's a great idea but I assume they're doing that because Ubuntu is moving away from X and going to Wayland only um, but you've seen that if you install XFCE 4 whilst you can customize it it's, it you may as well just go for a distribution that's got XFCE 4 as the default desktop in the first place or go for something with an LXQT uh, desktop and that's the end of the video if you liked it give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.